would Becker be number one? This is what Lendl has done in 86. He is eight titles. That's number one. Most finals, that's number one. Match record, 70 and six sets, prize money. All of those things he leads in. And tonight he is making an excellent argument that no one other than Yvonne Lendl should be number one. And there's author and sometime movie star, George Plimpton. The game on Lendl's serve, Becker has had chances like this, and Lendl has come through with the big shots. Watch this now. This is a beautiful approach shot. Lendl hits an excellent passing shot. Uh, Becker didn't have it covered, but it was just wide. If you have a very vivid imagination, I suppose you could call this one of the best chances that Becker has had. How often has he led on Lendl's serve? Not once. But whenever he does start something or get close to it, Lendl comes right back with an answer. 15 love. Is there anything Boris is doing differently? You talked about his, his speed a little bit earlier and how they were placed. Anything he's doing differently now? Well, it looks like he's he's lifting up on all these shots. He's not playing uh, you know, as he really feels like he can, and that's really frustrating him. Because the sympathetic audience right now, uh, maybe this is a chance for him to you know, break through and maybe to have a chance here. If he gets to 15.40, maybe he has a shot at it. 114 miles per hour on Lendl's last serve. More than a maybe rocket on this one. This is a big point for Becker. Oh! Get the... It wasn't that deep a serve. He could have chipped it. He had the chip anyway. Make Lendl make the passing shots. Maybe he can do it all night. If he can, let him have the title. But at least make him go for it. Yeah, you've got to put the pressure on somewhere, Cliff. I totally agree. 30 off. service wide. He was just hesitated for a moment too long and that gave Lindell the chance to uh, satisfy himself exactly the shot that would win it for him take a look here now th see this hesitation now he decides to move in but by that time it's too late so when the passing shot went by him he wasn't close enough to the net he's not reacting he's thinking isn't he Cliff? the spontaneous movement just isn't there 40 30. Well, 
while there was a glimmer of hope for Becker and his fans in the fourth game of his third set, but Lendl dashed any hopes they might have had, and it's all even up in two games apiece. The man at courtside, Rod Laver, you know, I was a, I suppose he was everybody's here at the time in the 60s when he won everything, I guess all through until the 70s, but i tell you how he used to play, because he won't tell you himself. He, sometimes when I used to watch him, it looked like he was given the guy the first couple of sets, but the way he always got back into the match was by opening his shoulders and hipping harder, if anything, and he did it countless times. There was not a negative thought in Rocket's head when he was down, I'll tell you that. And you can't, at this point anyway, say the same thing for Becker. He is playing, to some extent, with his tail between his legs, mentally speaking. Rocket, I suppose you'd be the only one to answer whether those were your true feelings or not. That's the way it looked to everybody else, though. That's why my, my coach, Harry Hoffman, said, relax and go for the lines. That's, I think, uh, the only thing you can do. If you think too much about it, which Boris is doing right now, you're getting into more trouble. You're confused enough as it is. Just settle down and uh, put a little bit more top on the ball and keep them in. Fourth double fault for Becker. Ah! Wide. Just wide. And it's 30-15. Gunter Bosch, coach of Boris Becker. Those guys feel as much pressure as the players. Lacan's coach to come up. Just have a word with us here for about five minutes, Roger. Before uh, Lacan played earlier in the week, he said, I can't leave my seat. I said, Lacan would go crazy if I did. Uh, Tyriac said, I can't talk to Fred Stolle at court side. He said, my man would go crazy. But I'll come up there and talk to you. They know where they're sitting. Exactly. They look over there. They need that positive reinforcement. Becker's fastest serve, 124 miles per hour. He's been averaging 115. Second serve here. When that shot works, it looks terrific. When it doesn't work, it looks like he he's just missing it. He's playing with, uh, pl firing on three cylinders out of eight. Well, I almost get the feeling that he's not watching the ball. You know, he's, he's lining up and he's taking his eye off the ball. And at that particular shot there just gives me the feeling that he's, he's looking for where it's going and not really paying attention to the actual shot. It's a big point for Becker. Gets to deuce, he could get broken. He knows it. He needs this one. Oh! That's long and it's deuce. Rod, the other thing that I'm interested in is that Lendl is not impressed by that big topspin second serve of Becker's. Earlier in the week, he could throw that thing into some of the other players that he's played against, get into the net, and he'd have a volley. He's not even trying that against Lendl, and Lendl's just tipping it back. Just moving in and taking the pace off it and pushing it back in play and doing it extremely well. That's all you need. And he ace for Boris Becker, his ninth. And then Becker. Just one observation down here. It seems that uh, Boris doesn't uh, want to go over to Lendl's forehand. I think if he does, he, he used to be able to get away with it last year, but I think Lendl's speed has helped him here and he's, he's making a big weapon out of that so he gets in trouble if he goes to his forehand. I think you're right Rocket but I think that he should hit it into the forehand anyway especially in the uh, deuce court because I think he keeps Lendl honest that way he doesn't know where it's coming every time. Becker 
wins the fifth game of the third set. He leads three games to two in the final to Nabisco Masters.